it is together. Um, unfortunately, I had to do a repair already to the board, and the observant of you would have noticed there it was a surface mount capacitor dangling for dear life. Now, it was worse by the time I was done handling it, but when it came out of the bag, it was already detached on one side. So I did not have any of those kicking around. I couldn't just solder it back on because one of the small, very small tabs broke. So I stole one from my Vampire 500 and I will order the replacement to get that one back up and running. It is just a filter cap, but I wouldn't recommend you running without it. So hopefully this will work. So this is live. So we're gonna see what happens when I turn on the power. And here we go. Fingers crossed. Oh, there we go. It's booting. If I had it hooked up to HDMI, you would see a vampire logo. And I do not at the moment have anything because it's probably trying to output through HDMI so maybe I will hook up that monitor I have a spare monitor I'll hook up the HDMI output let's see if that brings better results hello and welcome back Unfortunately, this board seemed to have a loose capacitor, and any of you that noticed during the filming of the video at the beginning, that this capacitor here was a bit loose, and of course after I handled it a bit more, it became even more loose, kind of skewing off on an angle. I tried to repair it, but the one end broke right off, like literally that went inside the uh, tantalum capacitor. I believe these are 22 microfarad, 16 volts. So I didn't happen to have a spare, so my Vampire 500 version 2, well, it sacrificed it. It's kind of a bit darker than the one. I think the heat gun may have done that, but other than that, the capacitor does work. Um, I'm going to order some new ones, probably replace that one plus the one that I stole. But for the sake of the video, because I am willing to make sacrifices, um, this at least would get it up and running. Now these are just filter caps, but ideally, yeah, you want them in place. And anyone that has not done surface mounting, um, soldering, it's not pleasant. I still have no patience for it. Especially as you get older, the eyesight's not what it used to be. Yeah, not very fun. So I'm gonna throw the keyboard back onto this. Um, this is the original boot card. Um, different adapter, but same, same uh, installation. And we're gonna boot this up and try upgrading the cores and we'll see how well that goes. Hopefully that capacitor is the end of this uh, adventure, which I don't mind adventures, but not that kind of adventure. But uh, anyway, I shall return shortly. Well, oh, just before I uh, reassemble the computer to the point where we can test it, the HDMI connection, which is here, and this is actually an SD card reader, which is kind of nice, you can put like I think on my 500, my Vampire 500, I have a 16 gigabyte in there, and you can access access it and dump all your files and backups or whatever you want on it. You can't boot off of it, but at least you can use it as storage. This is a bit precarious because of that. I had to remove this, sorry about that, and because if you take a look at this, if this is in place, which is roughly there, and if you look at the edge here yes you see so but the only HDMI cable that would fit in there properly is you'd have to get one of the very thin as in width wise to fit in there or at least short so maybe the end might go to here because this floppy gets in the way as far as I know you can leave a floppy in here and even if you used a GoTech uh, floppy emulator you're still gonna run into the same problem but I just thought I'd let you know, if you ever go this route, and I'll see if I can find one, you need to find a very small, at least short in length, like, like so, or short in width to fit in there because the floppy gets in the way. And it's maybe five millimeters max, but it's enough. But anyway, 
I shall uh, throw the keyboard back together again. Keyboard right there. And we will see what happens on this thing. I will be right back. I have returned. So I've thrown the floppy in enough so I can use it. Uh, keyboard's on. And uh, at this point, let's see what happens. Move the camera a bit more. I can't get it right in front because I still have to do some typing and whatnot, but I can zoom in a bit at least. A bit. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I will turn it on and let's see what happens. Bit of delay. Um, if you have HDMI output hooked up, you would actually see the vampire logo at this point, and then it will boot. There we go. Excellent. So it did boot. And this is the same card as before um, that you've watched previously. So what I need to do now is I'm going to try to update the core because it is currently 2.5. I I know that because I had it briefly hooked up to the HDMI output. And uh, because it's booting to NTSC, nothing else else happened after the logo, but the logo did show version 2.5. So I'm gonna try to flash this to version 2.11. I will know if the floppy works. We shall see. Oh, good sign. Excellent. Uh, that's not the right disc, or is it? I think it has the right files in it. Uh, yeah, it's got the, the core here, so I have to extract that. Um, lazy, so I'll use directory opus, which I should have somewhere. There we go. Okay, I'm just gonna dump it to RAM. And we're on DF0. So at least I know the high density floppy works because these are high density disks, you can tell that's all, that's 1.2 megs almost in other various files. So. Let me uh, drag, drag and drop. And it's copying it to RAM. Sorry about the flicker, there's not much I can do about it. It's uh, PAL mode, this one's in. Actually, the, the computer itself is PAL. I forced a workbench into uh, using the screen mode preferences into NTSC, but unfortunately everything else is running in the native mode, which of course is how. But, as we all know, if you want to play games or serious demos, you need an Amiga that does that. And even ideally natively, because trying to force it into PAL, even though it can, sometimes doesn't work well if it's an NTSC Amiga. Any second now, it will be done. Okay, oops, sorry about that. Okay, so we got that copied over. Um, while, so I don't waste any time, I'm gonna pick a random location. Make it work. Why don't I have the drives in here? Hmm, guess I can do this old school. DH1. Apparently it's not called that. What is it called? I should know this, this is my computer. Bit CF1, but I called it something like that. Okay. Oops, delete. Ah, look, there you go. I'm gonna make a directory called temp in here. Or maybe I can make it called, uh, I'll call it vampire. Vampire, that, that's good enough. Okay, and I'm gonna drag and drop that in there so it'll uncompress. Remember, this will flash the, um, what you call it, the new 3.1.4 OS uh, 3 ROM into that. And I might as well copy this for later. This is uh, the Sega driver, is basically the Super AGA driver, which uh, for the HDMI output, which we're not going to be using right now, but eventually um, I will get it up and running on that output. Okay, that's everything there. So uh, the other disc I want, might as well go in here, is copy the image from that Hyperon, Hyperion Entertainment release for the 3.1.4 ROM update. That is not it. Oops. One more, one more disc. I got them mixed up. Let's 
see what happens. Too many floppies, they all look the same. That is not it either. That is of old. So give me one moment and I will find the right disc because I might as well, while I'm doing floppy fun, I might as well get the proper disc to copy the file. I shall return. And back, yes, I left it in the Amiga 1200. So I did not want to give it up, I forgot all about it. So this will be the disc. There we go. I'll copy that over as well. Now they recommend, even though this is a 600, if you want to update the uh, flash ROM inside the Vampire, uh, they recommend the A1200 version. Even though it's a 600, use the A1200 uh, kick ROM. You can see that's exactly what I'm doing here. Ta-da! Okay, so I have everything else in here. I might as well go into RAM and for future, yeah, we'll copy this folder over as well. I'm going to run it from RAM, but at least I have it now, just in case something horrifying happens. Now the good thing is, is I have a programmer for the Atera, whatever it's called, FPGA, so if something horrible happens, I can flash it back to an older version, but you need that USB blaster, the programmer, because if you, obviously if your computer doesn't boot, you can't downgrade the flash. So. Here we go. Wish me luck. Let's read the instructions. I can't. I could, but it has to be all caps. So right here, the current version is gold 2.5. I'm going to flash it to 2.11. And it has to be all caps, Y-E-S. And hold your breath, and I hit enter. It doesn't take too long. You pretty much do a full power cycle, ideally a cold one, after a cold boot after this is done. Hopefully it will boot. I think from 2.9 or 2.10 up, it uh, the uh, FPU is supported. So uh, it should work just fine with any program that requires it. So I'm going to take out the floppy disk, set it aside. Turn it off, wait five glorious seconds, and hopefully it will boot up. And on. The blue screen does not go nicely. Just ignore it. There we go. Okay. Maybe that was normal. Okay. So, let us try a program or two. Actually, execute command. Type in veil. Yeah, it's 128 uh, megabytes of RAM. It's cool. And uh, two megs of chip because that Indivision, uh, I think it's called the, the 600N, gives me one megabyte of chip RAM on top of what the 600 comes with, so you get two. So two megs of chip and 128 megabytes of fast RAM. So, if I do the CPU command, it should tell me what's in here. Which is not an 040, but that's fine. Um, but it's uh, an 060, they call it the 080 because it's like an 060 on steroids. But it's got um, everything there. The FPU doesn't necessarily show up, but I believe it works because we'll try sysinfo. And if the FPU does not work properly, like uh, like I said, versions I think 2.9 or under, I can't remember the exact number, um, it would crash because it would go to do the FPU test and then it would, it would fail. So let's see what happens here. Speed. There we go. Excellent. So, not bad. 104 MIPS and 51 M flops. Remember before, I think we were getting five or six MIPS with the O20 accelerator. Very, very, very fast. So that's working fine. So let us try the next test of getting, I believe you go about, yeah, the version, yeah, it's 45.64. And the new one is 46, like remember that 3.14 ROM I told you about that was recently updated about a month ago, an official release. Um, it is in, oh, go back into here, and Vampire, 
and doesn't necessarily tell you. It tells you how to install it here. But yeah, it's the version is 46.143 versus 45.64 if I could get to there. Yeah. So it is definitely a newer version. So we will try to flash the like inside everything's contained on the vampire card. Like that technically that OS ROM, that three point ROM that I have sitting on the motherboard, I, I could actually remove that. It doesn't use it at all. It uses the one that's on the actual FPGA. So what we're gonna do is, is, is this will let you ever since the 3.14 came out, um, the Apollo team put together this utility that will flash the core to the newer version. Like part of the core, obviously, not all of it. So let us uh, that's the program there. So let me um, execute command. It's been a while since I've done Amiga DOS, so bear with me. CLI, CD, work, temp. I said temp. Uh, it's not called work? Oh, why not? I didn't put a space in there. Silly me. Silly, silly me. Oh, goodness. Okay. Memories. CD work space. Oh, I was right the first time. It's not called work anymore? Oh, there's no such thing. Just a second here. What should I call it? Ah, oh, utilities. That would make sense. Sorry, it's been a while. Here we go. Or I could just do the uh, CF1. I'll, I'll cheat. Object not found. What am I doing here? No directory called temp. Apparently. DIR. Didn't I put it in there? It says vampire. Oh, there's no temp folder. They called it vampire. Oh, embarrassment. Okay, I got this. DIR. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. So there it is. So I'm in that directory, so I'm ready to go. I just have to read the installation part. That's not the installation part. Uh, let me go through the installation. Hmm. Okay, let me just, uh, oh, such windows. Just one second here. Damn it. Okay. Oh, it's a PDF. That's why I can't read it. Excellent, I don't have a PDF viewer on here. Well, that's not going to help me any. Okay, let's just try Vampire Flash 314. I think that's the one I need. Yeah, not the map, the Flash. The map of the Vampire map is just if you want to not burn it, I mean, into the, uh, the core. So it's kind of like any other accelerator card you have. It'll just use that file and then reboot the computer. But I feel, you know, extra daring today so let's try the uh the vampire flash oops my typing is really bad by the way i apologize typing like a serial killer here with fonts and not fonts okay and vampire flash come on where are we here 314 hopefully it uh, tell me what it wants excellent ROM image, extra ROM, force. Okay. So, we'll try the ROM image, which is in that directory, which is called kick a 1200 46143 Kick.a1200-46143. Okay, ready? See if I get an error or if it does anything. Nope. That was relatively easy. This might take five minutes. Five. And who am I to argue the program with the programmers? So if you weren't as daring, like I don't really, it doesn't bother me too much if this fails because I have the USB blaster which I can reprogram this. There's a, a, a header on the, the board that I can use to flash it if this fails. Um, but if you don't want to, you can use the vampire map option and it'll just, like any other accelerator card, it'll, it'll load the kick file, reboot the computer, and you'll have it. So it doesn't modify the core at all. Ever. In any way possible. Yeah. 
could zoom in, but then maybe, I don't know. Let's see, because I'm bored. Oh, that's about as best as I can do. It's kind of weird, eh, how cameras have issues with sync, like, because uh, the monitor's running at 50 hertz or 60, and you get these weird lines or mare patterns, and all that fun stuff, patterns. Yeah, speaking used to be my forte, but apparently not anymore. I apologize. So I'm gonna edit this out, and uh, well, I'll come back when it finishes. Yes, so it's finished. And of course, there's the disclaimer. Software is as is. Flashing a ROM image invokes a risk of write errors. You might need a USB blaster to recover, which I have. Um, you need to repeat the ROM flash procedure after a core update. That's obvious because new core, yeah, they're not um, gonna worry about that. Neither Hyperion Entertainment nor developers of the OS is responsible for imminent demise. Um, if you understand this, type yes, yeah, sure, sounds good to me. And it's happening as we speak. Okay, keep thy fingers crossed. One, two, three, four, and five. Here it goes. Okay, that's fine. Blue screen was before. Oh, I hear booty noises. Oh yes, yes, it requires these. I will have to satiate the desires of Workbench by getting these discs. Give me one moment. I'll be right back. I grabbed my discs and rebooted the computer. Um, the 3.1.4 update is not just the ROM. It also comes with, uh, like the Kickstart ROM, it also comes with, um, floppy images, which I took the liberty of creating, and you're allowed to because I paid for it, it's my copy. So I bought actually a version for all of them, like the A1200, 500, 600, 2000, which is one. And then the, uh, so the other third one is the Amiga 4000. Um, so the reason why it's asking me for this is because they had to make, the ROM 512 kilobytes only has so much room, so with various improvements that they have done, they had to remove the icon library and the workbench library. So uh, I will give it this. But what I like about this is Clonato kind of did that with their 3.x ROMs, but it just, if you didn't have any of these, like the icon library, actually I think for it, it was just the workbench library because they just removed it to, to disk. But the, um, I was gonna say, yeah, so, but it wouldn't come up with a request here. It just wouldn't work. You'd get a blank screen and you would stare at it for a while and realize that's all you're gonna get. So it's kind of neat that this at least asks for it. So let me see, it's the first time I've ever done this. I shall put uh, Libs Icon Library. So what drive would that be, I wonder? Let's go with Workbench. Floppy, That I mean, not drive. Icon Library, doesn't like that, I guess. Hmm. Maybe it's on a different disk. Is it on the install disk? Yes, it is. That's cool. Like I said, the Clonato version, because they made it kind of like an extended ROM, they got, they had to make more room. It got rid of the, uh, the workbench library. So it's kind of neat to at least ask for it. And I bet you, I wonder if it actually copied it to the drive or not. I don't know. Guess one way I can find out. Uh, directory Opus. Did it copy it to Lips? Because I wouldn't have had an icon library before. There it is, right there. 25th of March, what? Is that the same version? Uh, I think I took the disc out. One second. I'm just curious. Let's do one more. That's the same icon library. It's uh, not exactly, actually. It's not the same library at all. Yeah, so I'm gonna copy that over. So it loads it in the memory, I better, I, but it doesn't actually copy it to the boot part. 
documentation. I should do that with the workbench library as well. Oh, I didn't copy these to libs. What am I thinking? My fault. That's not going to help me any. Yes, watch this long enough and you will know that how not to do things, I guess. Okay. Back to D, H. No, 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 no. This is horrible. C, F, C. I'm going to move that over. I said I'm going to move that over. And there should be an icon library as well. No. Okay, so now when I reboot, it should not ask me for any of this. Any second now, once it stopped copying this file. Okay, I'm gonna reboot. And it should boot without asking for disks because it already has it on the workbench partition. There you go, awesome. You can do a full install if you want to as well, and there's extra new features, and I would recommend it. Uh, the biggest thing I like about 3.1.4 is my biggest, uh, they finally have the, the four gigabyte, you know, barrier broken. So you can put in like, you know, 100, 200, 300, 400, like whatever gigabyte drives, and you can partition them as such. And it, it's really nice. You no longer have that limitation. And that's definitely what the Amiga needed for a very long time. Native in the OS, no boots required. It's, it's really nice. It's right in ROM. The uh, SCSI device has been revamped as well as the HD toolbox um, it looks similar but it has extra features and it recognizes very large drives so if you go about there you go and of course it got rid of the uh, the Apollo team's uh, little banner and you know, bringing 68k back because that's right in the ROM itself but beautiful and that's it. It seems to be fully, fully functional. And I really have to run this one more time because it's extra awesome. Yep, unbelievable. 188 times faster than a stock 600. That's crazy. So later on in another video, perhaps, I, I may, right, once I get this thing all together, maybe you know, in a couple weeks, I'll put a video on this uh, playing stuff. Um, either like through natively through the um, ECS chipset or um, or and and actually both I will also include the HDMI output and see what can be done with that so I hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, installation would be of any help to anybody else that's gonna get one of these models or um, you might want to wait for the version 4 which can be standalone or an add-on for the 500 I'm not sure uh, the Vampire I'm really waiting for, if it ever comes out, is the one for the 1200 because the 32 bit plus that will just be insane. So I hope that happens because the 1200 is my most uh, favorite computer. I have several and I will never part with them. So that's it for this video. And uh, like always, thanks for watching. Hello. I mentioned that the video was over almost I just wanted to have you see the 600 assembled instead of in pieces plus these do work now properly they did before but like I said one of the wires broke off power light is on you should have the hard drive access in the bottom there there we go And just to prove the floppy disk works, I mean the floppy drive light works as well. Excellent. So everything is up and running, everything is together. And uh, that's it. So like I said, I, I might show some stuff running on this later. Um, hopefully I'll get it to work on the HDMI output and that way we don't have to put up with this 
horrible flickering since I don't have a capture card to speak of for my PC or anything else for that matter. Well, that's it. So, like I said before, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.